going to ship at tier 3 towers. We'll see Jonas in the bottom lane in a lot of trouble. Easy first blood for Big Daddy No Tail. Blade Fury under the tower, and we'll see if he can make it out here. No TP scroll. He's just going to eat through the trees. This is kind of awkward here. Oh, they find well, he made a path for him. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my. He's just going to walk away. Easy as that. Still be able to get, like, if they get a really good cask and a fissure. Nope. No. No. Okay, okay there's mind. the fissure. Oh, he keeps canceling. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh my god. That should have been such an easy escape. Did the, but... did the fissure just barely block yes. it and that was the pathing there? Uh, yeah. That early help that she got is certainly paying off, at least for now. Early point in the Maledict as well. Last game, I think we saw that completely ignored by the Witch Doctor. Okay, coming in, man. Yep, absolutely. Miracle. He's in a lot of trouble here. Maledict will connect, and I think the curse should be enough to take him down if Liv doesn't get it, but Queen of Pain will just throw one more auto attack and get another kill up on the scoreboard. I like this. Nip are, I think they're rotating better with armor and doesn't actually have the greatest HP pool either. Um, it's in order to offset that incredible ultimate, right? But y it's very easy to gank him pre level 6, and they didn't do that once. Here, Hanskin's already shut down the SF. Yeah, but the opportunity cost is not having access to those bounty runes, which we've seen the mid alchemists really utilize. Up top, we'll see a little fight break out and Seal Kid. He'll be the victim. They start to poke the tombstone, but don't have the damage to bring it down, and the Winter Wyvern will die. Moon Meander getting very aggressive here. This dual offlane's working decently. 20 last hits on Moon Meander, too. He's got the most in the game. Yeah, quite good for monkey business. Very aggressive posture here, and he will take the curse. Cast won't find any bounces. Lip making the rotation as well. Moon Meander certainly going to die here. Manages to get off a soul rip, but... Or soul rip, rather. But still dies. Queen of Pain making... So, so while he doesn't have a huge amount of CS, I, I don't think you can discount him too much. True. He's trying to kill SF once again. This is going to be really easy. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Urshika left. And scan up on the high ground there. Limp comes in to get things started. Seal Kid with a splinter blast as well. There's the oh casket. My oh my! Shadow Fiend just gets put six feet under in the blink of an eye. Now fly, trapped on the, uh, on the wrong side of the fissure, but it really makes no difference. Rotation from Jonas and Fun makes it an easy gank. It's a two Nowhere for nil. is safe. Have you seen a successful gank in that position from a Witch Doctor? Like, the range is so limited from that cliff area. Yeah. It's so rare to actually see dying can soak up. Um, but it is still a problem because the again the alchemist is actually relatively for strength hero low HP. <gasps> oh, big oh, big oh, he can oh. right click him down, I think. Down bottom, oh, big daddy. Mind. He'll survive for now. Oh, oh, he he get him with fissure, perfectly timed indeed. And Splinter Bat blast, dragon on dragon action <laughs> in their laning phase, just because the off laner difference. But. Nip doing a really good job taking advantage of this. Monkey are actually going to do some rotations of their own. They know they should shut down Era. Oh, Omni slapped after the tombstone comes down. Blade Fury as well. Aaron's in a lot of trouble. He'll be the first victim of this fight, but Moon Meander could be going down second. Indeed he will. It's a one for one as NIP focused the tombstone, but Shakiro has made the rotation as well. Ice Path connects on a few heroes. Limp, aggressive blink forward. Scream, still holding on to the Sonic Wave for now, and will let them retreat. Shakiro's really like I feel like delaying so it by 1800 is maybe too much of an investment if you're not going for that. Yeah, I'm yeah. fully sacrificing the Too high up of an opportunity cost. We'll see initiation here on the Moon Meander. Winner's Curse to get it started. The follow-up Sonic Wave will be enough to finish him down as well as the Death Ward from the Witch Doctor. Now Omni Slash bounces around, does some decent damage to Seal Kid. Chain Frost as well doing now big damage to Seal Kid. He falls to the macro pyre of the Jakiro. Big Daddy locked in the tree line. He'll be the next one to fall. It's a two-for-one so far as Fly tries to TP. Oh, oh. and go slam. I'll finish him off. Jonas and Fun getting another one. Make it three as NIP take a big fight in the top lane. The fact is, like, so much value in the Radiance that now they have I, I, to fight, I think right? Arrow would probably consider going for the Radiance and just having the Medallion if it wasn't for the fact that they're fighting so much. Oh, well, now they find Miracle down bottom. The Orchid comes out, as does the Sonic Wave, but so far they don't quite have the damage to finish him off. Omni Slash to the backside oh, does the a lot fight. of damage to Lip. The Queen of Pain falls first in this fight. Now the mech used by Monkey Business will help heal up the Shadow Fiend and Seal Kit will be in the danger zone, not even going to be able to cold embrace and wouldn't have saved him anyhow. A two for the other way here is Monkey Business getting supports, like both the Winter yeah. Wyvern and the Witch Doctor yeah. are pretty high impact. I guess the biggest concern is that if you, you could get cold embrace countered. Oh, here we go. Fight going to break out in the Radiant Jungle. Limp blinks forward first. Orchid on the crit, but there's the Omni Slash. They bring down Limp first. They'll trade one for one with the Jakiro. Seal Kid stuck in the tree line. We'll try to TP out, but no. Big Daddy gets the Blade Dance proc, and we'll find the kill. A two for one as NIP are the aggressors. They get shut down and open up a Roche possibility here for Monkey Business. That's for sure. Uh, th this will put you in a position where you have to get oh, successful ganks, which he will not get here. 
Oh, Limp, he actually blinks forward, puts the Orchid on to Big Daddy, but Shakiro's there with that newly fashioned Yule Scepter right into the Ice Map, Macro Pyre, Jane Frost, they bring oh. it down, but Echo Slam from back. Jonas on four. Out comes the mech, Big Daddy's still alive, that healing ward is down and doing some serious work, they'll finally finish it off, but it may be too late, Ice Path will trap in Jonas and Fawn as well as Era. the Splinter Blast, yeah, it's not going to do much, it's going to be NIP trading one for three. A close call, it seemed like the perfect echo, but they just didn't. All skill shots to having something reliable. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I'm glad to see it still being utilized. <laughs> and this is what we were talking about earlier. This is Miracle just standing on the high ground with the Aegis, and they can slow siege this tower so easily. The healing ward right behind him, Crit will continue to lob in the liquid fires, and this is an easy tier three, and there's not too much Nip can do about it. They do have the Echo Slam back available. But the Blink Dagger is getting broken by that pesky zombie, so he can't initiate. Here we go. Seal Kid manages to get off the Cold Embrace after the Omni Slash does big damage. It'll set up for an easy raise from Miracle. Now the racks are exposed. No glyph for the Dire. All they can do here is hope for the big Echo Slam. Jonas trying to line it up. He gets off the Fissure. Will block in Miracle. But still plenty of time on the Aegis. Guardian Greaves used from the low ground. Oh my Monkey God. Business are just handling this so well. Their sieging dedication is just so good. I mean, he still hasn't died. Healing Ward, Ice Armor, the heal good. from Soul Rip. Uh, I, I could never see this unstable concoction actually being a, a really viable nuke. And just look at the positioning here. They're so spread out. There's no way for this Earthshaker to get an opening. You're also talking about heroes that actually naturally have high amount of armor. They're, yeah. they're both agility heroes, right? So you throw Ice Armor on there. They're both going over easy 20. Okay, Fissure will kind of separate this fight. It does like the Shadow Fiend on the high ground. Witch Doctor Ulti will be interrupted by the Ice Path. Shadow Fiend just prints down the Winter Wyvern on their high ground. The barracks have fallen, and this is starting to feel like the beginning of the end here, boys. NIP are in so much trouble there. What the Echo done. connects on five heroes. Monkey Business could actually be in some oh, trouble the here. Kid. But Jonas falls, and there's just too much healing, too much sustainability. They will get rid of the Aegis and kill the Lich, but that's all they get out of it. Oh, that looks so good. Again, another great Echo Slam out of Earthshaker, but just not quite enough damage. If they, they had an the Witch Doctor, oh, maybe they could have done something there, but hand scan, he'll just get finished off by the Shadow Fiend. I felt like the unstable Ooh. concoction was really short time too, because it did very little damage. Might just be ice armor though. There's also the fact that, I mean, that that would have been like, uh, and this is the the nip that, uh, as much as I love watching nip, they they are kind of like almost hot and cold in a way. I think they're yeah. like. Their team fight is great, but they just sometimes fail to find the open. Winter's Curse comes out, but Jonas was put inside of the uh, Yule Scepter. He will get off the Fissure, but again with the sustainability, the Soul Rip, followed by the Guardian Greaves. Everyone's topped off. This is an easy fight for Monkey Business at this point. Steel Kid will get isolated off to the side in the Cold Embrace. They're going to be able to bring down Jonas. I mean, this Shadow Feet is just massive. Witch Doctor gets off the ulti, but it will be uh, interrupted there by the Chain Frost. Three for nil. Monkey Business. Just shake it off as they head towards the dire base. The upper bracket, so if NIP Dyer's falls here 0 2, they could still come back and make it to the major. Now Limp comes in, double damage rune on, pops the BKB, but there's an Omni Slash ready and waiting with his name on it. It'll take him from full to zero in the blink of an eye as he dies once more without a buyback available. Oh boy. Thanks. Then Nip gets kills here. It's all magic damage. You saw that unstable concoction with Solar Crested Shadow Fiend. It took like a hundred damage. I was like, that's really disappointing. Yep. That's Sun I guess. Fun. And IP move into the Roach Pit, but Big Daddy, he just hops in, uses the Blade Fury straight away, and now this fight from oh, NIP is cast. broken up. Good ult here. The winner's curse comes out on a Big Daddy. The Echo Slam as well. They get the Lich as well as the Juggernaut. That's something for NIP. All their ults. Can they get some more though? Limp pops the BKB. Cold Embrace will buy him a little bit of time. Now BKB used by Miracle. Shadow Rays will finish off the Queen of Pain and Seal Kid. He'll just die to right clicks. Miracle uses the ultimate. Requiem of Souls will connect on two. Era with nowhere to go. He's just going to stand his ground and fall. Now the Yules put up on the Witch Doctor. Handscan's going to get taken out. Ends up being a four for two, and that's it. Good game is called. NIP will oh, fall 2-0 to Monkey Business, which means Monkey Business have secured themselves a slot at the first major. You know, to... Yeah.